Hello everybody, this is uh, Kevlar with Tech Me Out TV. Uh, today I have a special video for you. We're going to demonstrate uh, from the perspective of a PHP developer uh, an application that queries a MySQL database <clears throat> and then uh, we're going to show you the perspective of a black hat hacker using uh, Kali Linux and SQL map to perform what's called a MySQL injection. Uh, we're going to show you how data is stolen um, using MySQL injection. Um, we're going to demonstrate you know, the severity of leaving the holes open in the code as a developer, a PHP developer, that can open your company up to uh, data loss and uh, data theft. It can be pretty disastrous. So after we demonstrate uh, the application code and the MySQL injection, we're going to demonstrate how to implement a simple function that's built into PHP that will defend against MySQL injection. Um, and we're also going to show you another function that will, will uh, defend against cross-site scripting. As for our environment, we have a attacker host here on Kali Linux uh, 1.0.8, I believe. Um, this is going to be 192.168.1.4 on our local network. And then we have the application host, which is running CentOS, and it's 192.168.1.30. Uh, the Kali Linux has uh, SQL map installed, uh, which is going to be our <clears throat> tool for um, identifying MySQL injection points and stealing data. Then on our application host we have um, we have uh, Apache running, we have um, PHP as well as the PHP MySQL extension um, we've already got the services up. Um, and my SQL my server is installed and up. Um, so we have my SQL on there. We've got PHP, Apache. So we've got everything to, to create a, a basic PHP application um, on this server. <clears throat> We're currently in var www.html, the main Apache uh, directory. So uh, to get started though, we're going to first create our uh, database infrastructure. It's going to be real simple. Um, so let's log into the MySQL. Uh, what's my password? There we go. Alright, so we're going to create a database first. We'll call it app2. Okay, we're going to use app2 and we're going to create a table. So let's create a table called um, table example2. Uh, we'll give it just two fields. We'll give it an ID field. We'll make it an integer 255. We'll make it the primary key and we'll make it auto increment and then we'll make a field called data make it a var char 255 all right so we've got our table oops there's our table um, so let's uh, let's put some data in there that we're going to want to steal so let's insert into table example two the ID and the data field. We'll null the ID and we'll say we are going to steal this data. Okay. All right. Let's put a couple example rows in there to steal. Okay, so now that our data is in the database table, example two, we can see here, um, <clears throat> we can get started writing our application that's going to utilize this data for something important, let's just say. Okay, so let's uh, create a new PHP application. All right, let's open our PHP tags. All right. 
And I know that some of this MySQL functions I'm going to use are deprecated. Um, they still work in the version I've got running. So I'm um, going to connect MySQL connect to the local host using. Oh wait, we forgot something. We forgot to create a MySQL user. Um, so let's go right back in here and um, create a MySQL user. Let's do create user app2 at localhost identified by techme out to you. All right, we're going to give privileges. Grant, we're going to grant all privileges on everything to this new user. We're going to say app2 at localhost. And we're going to flush privileges. All right, exit out. All right, so now we have our user that we can use. Now we have our we have our database, we have our table, we have our user, and they have the correct permissions to uh, run state uh, SQL statements against the table. All right, so let's get right back into our application. Tab two. Our password was TechMeOutTV, and we got an issue here. All right, we gotta select our database. Our database we created was app2. And all right, so now we can start creating um, our query. So, and a lot of PHP applications or applications in general, you're gonna run select statements against a database table where you're gonna have a where clause in there. It's gonna be something like where ID equals one, let's say. So let's use that for example, so select everything from table example two where ID equals one. All right. So let's create our query function, MySQL query, we're gonna use SQL variable, uh, row equals MySQL fetch assos. Uh, all right, so now we've got our data in an array. We can loop through that data, let's say, like a lot of applications do. Um, wow, row equals MySQL fetch. Oops. All right, so let's just, for this example, this PHP application is going to echo out the data, uh, the data column. So let's echo row data. Right. So let's test that out from the command line. That's from PHP app two. We're gonna steal this data. So it was able to connect, select the that uh, the uh, data with ID equal to one. We are gonna steal this data. <clears throat> so typically. Um, developers use either a get or a post variable in their queries uh, to pull the data. It allows uh, the client side browser to tell the back end server you know what data you want to pull. So this usually is a variable which we will call ID and for this example we're going to make it a get variable and we'll call it ID and see uh, just to give you a little information so a get variable comes from the URL a lot of times you'll see a website um, that'll say whatever.php and then it'll have a question mark ID equals whatever some random number okay so that's where that that ID number is coming from and this is where we get into trouble as a developer okay um, we're passing this variable straight into a MySQL function. Okay, that is what opens you up to MySQL injection, um, and we're going to show you an example of that. All right, so we're getting our ID variable from the URL. We're passing it straight into a select statement that's going to pull the data, and we'll show you this still works if we do a curl. 
Oops. There it is. We're going to steal this data. All right. So we've got our application set up. Now we can. Um, now we can try to use SQL map from the attacker machine. Let's just make sure we can reach the application from this host. It's reachable. can connect on port 80 so we're good with that all right so now let's run SQL map SQL map dash u put the URL which is going to be 192.168.130 in my example slash app2.php id equals one all right so if we run SQL map as an attacker now we're the attacker uh, we found this app2.php on, on my application server. We want to see if it's vulnerable, so we can run just this simple statement. All right, so it says the get parameter ID, parameter ID is vulnerable. Do you want to keep testing others? Uh, sure, why not? All right, so it's completed its analysis, and it looks like parameter ID is injectable, and it gives you three different payloads that can be used against uh, against that parameter. All right, so we know it's injectable. What's next? So we're just going to hit up dash dash dbs. This will show us what databases there are. Oh, look at that. Here's our databases. App, app2, there's the one we just created. So now let's take it to the next level. Let's see if we can get tables. So we're going to use the database app2. And we're going to ask my uh, SQL map for the tables. And there's our table example. Okay, so now we're going to dump that data. So we're going to say dash capital T table example two dash dash dump. And as you can see, it was able to steal the data using the available uh, MySQL injection points that SQL map has found. So SQL maps are really easy to use. Any script kitty out there can use it. So it's really important that you protect your data. I mean, this could be uh, account usernames and passwords. Of course, you're going to use hashes, hopefully some kind of symmetric encryption. Um, hashes, you know, these days, uh, MD5s and all that are all very vulnerable to being cracked. So, you know, the data can be very sensitive information. It could be credit cards, um, you know, username and passwords, like I said. So, uh, as a developer, making sure you close those, uh, those uh, statements, those SQL statements, uh, unless you properly escape, you're going to be vulnerable. All right. So, let's jump into protecting from this. Okay. So how do we protect from this? <clears throat> There's a simple function in PHP that can be used called MySQL real underscore escape underscore string. Okay, let's close that. Okay, by doing this, it's going to escape any characters that like apostrophes uh, that that open you up to MySQL injection. So <clears throat> we've added that in. Let's copy app two for this example. Call it app three. All right. All right. So now let's try to steal data from app three, which is uh, using the MySQL real escape string function. Okay, so we're going to do SQL map, SCP, colon slash slash, localhost, oh, not localhost, sorry, we're the attacker now, 192, 168, 130, 
app3.php id equals one go as you can see the get parameter id is no longer injectable sql map was not able to find any injection points for it to be able to uh, run additional queries against the database all right so that simple function can save you right there. MySQL underscore real underscore escape underscore string. Let's open it back up and see what happens. And run the same thing just to show you for the example purposes. All right, let's save that file. Let's go back over here. We're going to run the same thing we just ran. What happened? Oh, we're getting some internal server error because we forgot to delete our enclosure here and we deleted the wrong thing actually. All right, save that. So those brackets need to still be there. Let's run that again. So it's vulnerable again, as you can see. All right, now um, there's another additional function you can use to prevent from cross-site scripting. I'm gonna throw that in there too. We're actually gonna, let's, let's just create a function in PHP. Function as we do. Clean string, we're gonna call it. Um, we're gonna pass the string into it. And we're going to return string. So string equals MySQL real escape string 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 equals. This is the additional function that will prevent the cross side scripting. HTML special cars chars. Okay, so we pass it through that. What that's going to do is strip out any kind of HTML or, or tags that people are trying to use for cross-site scripting. And we're returning the string back, so now we can just wrap our ID in this function, clean string. Alrighty then, so we can save that. And now um, let's copy app three and call it app four because SQL map kind of has this nice memory for some reason. It, if you close up the gaps, it still tries to pull back uh, cache data or something. So let's do app four. We're not vulnerable. All right. So that's how you. I'm just going to pull up the code here. That's how you protect against MySQL injection. The second function we talked about but did not demonstrate the HTML special chars. That will prevent the cross-site scripting. Uh, very important to utilize these functions when writing PHP applications. I hope you found this video useful. Please make sure to uh, visit techblog.techmeout.tv. Um, often, we, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos similar to this one. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope, you know, if you have any feedback or suggestions.